Eddie? Yeah, just a great night for us. Uh, just uh, one game, and we know that we're in a tournament. But uh, we were most interested over this last week of our at-bats, and uh, I thought the entire lineup came out swinging. I think we had six hits to start the game, and I thought the guys were just really on balance and returned energy back where it came from, right up the middle. Uh, Trace was uh, competitive. I just We were just talking before we walked in at Southeast Louisiana. You can see how they got hot and won a tournament. They're so competitive. They never gave away at bats uh, all the way through the eighth inning especially. They just kept competing, um, stood up on the plate, um, and caused us all kind of issues. And I just, I'm, I'm tickled to death for Trace. I think that was a career strikeout night for him, uh, but he had to earn it and work for it to get his five innings tonight. The pitches got there. Well, about the second inning, when we did score a bunch of runs in the first, we really thought about what to do with, with Trace, and we, of course, decided on a full start uh, with him just to try to use as few pieces as we could in our bullpen um, since we are in a tournament. So, And then just <clears throat> a few moments that you, you're trying to stay on your job and your task and, and keep leading this ball club, but uh, a couple of times just looking around this ballpark and seeing seven years of work by, by staff, uh, people in administration, uh, players that come before the guys that have the uniform on tonight. Everybody's worked during our tenure here for seven years to create a night like that in our ballpark. And uh, that's special. So I did take a moment of pause to, to soak that in a little bit for all the, the work that so many people have done. And I could just uh, I thank you. But uh, you know, we'll have to flush this real quick to, to get back ready. But a, but a good start for tonight. Questions from the floor? I mean, what did you eat today? That was an unbelievable performance. And then also, I don't know if you saw, but you're the second player today to homer from both sides of the plate in the same inning. What kind of accomplishment is that for you? I didn't know that. Uh, I mean, it's awesome, like a great feeling. But uh, like, I got to give props to our trainer, Anthony Sanderson, for getting me back out there. Like, he's done an amazing job. And I just like going in rehab every day. But And then working with Gabe Gross has been awesome. And he got me to where I'm at today. So I need to thank those people for that. But, but you, you talked about approach. What did you see out of the approach for you guys tonight? Yeah, I just thought we stood in there in good balance. Um, I just, you know, I think Sonny's was opposite field. I always look at that. You know, we had some power to all all parts of the field showed up tonight. Um, I, I think Cole's, uh, you know, three home runs. Yeah, three. Wow. <laughs> I think that's only been done like three times in Major League Baseball history is what uh, George, some of the notes he gave me. Uh, but we wouldn't allow I, I Rambush got the two strikes right off the bat. I think it was 0-2 just to start the ball game. He, he got, in his, got in his stance there in two strikes and just got us going with the ball up the middle, and we just started passing it down from there. Um, and, uh, you know, we've been looking for that. We've been scratching. We were, uh, we, 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 we were fighting and clawing there at the end, but just, uh, just off or, or whatever. And the guys have done a good job. He mentioned Gabe and Carl I'll throw in there. And, just everybody, the players especially, have done a good job because we played three squad games during this break from the tournament starting tonight with the regional, and everybody just did a good job. I just felt like the guys were gathering and loading on time uh, much better than I thought, you know, the 10 days prior, and just redirecting their bat right back to the middle of the field. I didn't know if they were going to show up to the pool side, the middle of the field, or the other way. That's how much plate coverage I thought we had and how much energy was being thrown back to where the ball was coming from. So just a, a great job to everybody. Brian Matthews. Yeah, Cole, have you ever hit a home run from both sides of the plate in a, in a, in a game? Uh, I have one time in high school my senior year, but not in the same inning. What it mean to you have, have, have a night like this, especially after what you've been through as far as the injury and, and the team just struggling with the at-bats? I mean, it's definitely awesome just to have a night like this, but at the same time, like I'm just glad we came up on top. Trey pitched a phenomenal game. Everyone from like one to nine just had a great game. Oh, do you think you had number four? No, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't think so. I didn't think I'd get a high enough. Advice? Cole, considering you had the oblique injury, one, walk me through what that process was like getting back, and then how did, see, how did it feel to see it come to fruition today? Uh, so it was basically just like a lot of rehab. It was a rehab I did. Uh, I'd start with like heating and then ultrasound, and then uh, I went through a bunch of series of stretches. And then after that, I got to do my work. I, like, I don't think I swung a bat for like a week and then like, I got to do like T work and then like every day I could progress more and more. And then after every like time I worked out or whatever I did, 
I would have a stem and ice, and so that would go through that. But it was just awesome, like, to come back today. I just felt relieved, like, didn't feel anything. It was awesome. Like, in practice, I've been, like, playing like, a little conservative with it, but it was felt like, good to be at conference today. Mark Murphy. Yeah, Cole, could you talk about, uh, have you ever hit three homers in a game? <laughs> I can't say I have. <laughs> okay. And also, uh, this week, when you were in batting practice, how, how close to 100% did you think you were? Were you surprised by how well you hit it tonight? Uh, I would say earlier in the week I said like 85, 90 percent, and then so it was a relief to, to come out here and play today. I didn't feel anything, felt good, so it was nice. Trace, um, come out first inning, you feel like you're, you're a little fired up, hitting 96, 97 in there, and then next inning you come out and you have an 11 run lead. How's that? How do you kind of stay focused on what you're trying to get done in that changing environment of of close game to kind of a, not a blowout situation, but overwhelming lead there. Well, it's comforting to have 11 runs in the first <laughs> inning. Uh, you know, kudos to Cole and everybody else up and down the lineup. Um, but, you know, you still got to stay locked in. You mm -hmm. still got to stay focused. You still got to treat it like a zero to zero ball game. Um, you know, it, it, it can be tough, but, you know, you also got to be thankful for the 11 runs at the same time. Adam Cole. Coach, um, you mentioned yesterday just kind of about what Cole brings to your guys' lineup. Of course, I know you brought three home runs tonight, but just beyond that, I mean, what does he bring to your guys' team? Yeah, I mean, if you if you really watch him play, man, he can turn a double play uh, really good. Uh, and if you really watch tonight, he got moved into the two hole. You know, that's probably a different part of the lineup, you know, before his injury. Uh, and we can hunt and we try to figure out really what to do with our lineup. And so that was a really good move, whoever put him there in the two hole tonight. To, <laughs> Uh, to get us going, uh, the switch hitter aspect, uh, another threat, uh, maybe sitting in front of Sonny to get some more pitches to hit. And I, I know he got some good balls to hit tonight, but he did a lot with them. So uh, I think we saw <clears throat> we saw what we were missing with Cole. And Garrett Farquhar did an amazing job, and coming to third base tonight did an amazing job. But uh, the potential that uh, that Cole gives us is is something that was really really needed. You know, if we want to get hot, get on a stretch run and, and want to be competitive. I mean, that's, that's nine RBIs. That's the most since, I guess, Hunter Morris in 2010. And I'm just looking to four homers in the first was the most since 2010. I don't want to, uh, I guess Mississippi State, I don't want to mention that because I was the pitching coach at Mississippi State. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I guess I will. Uh, but a lot of similarities tonight with that offense of that 2010 for showing up in a ball game tonight is uh, pretty special. Jason. Trace, you, you grew up down the road. You've seen a lot of Auburn baseball games. Now, what was that atmosphere like for you, and what did that mean for this program? It was amazing. I have a, a, a poster on the back of my closet in my room from that 2010 team. Um, you know, growing up an Auburn fan, it, it's amazing to see that kind of crowd for this environment to be what it was tonight and you know we hope to continue that all weekend but it, it's amazing to play behind I know it gets us fired up but you know it, it's it's amazing to see it happen coach how fast you talked a lot of in the lead up to the game about how you wanted to see a lot more from your offense when you see your offense explode for 11 runs out the gate how satisfied to see knowing that the practice you guys put in is paying off in the game well, a coach, a parent, uh, anybody that cares about anybody, young people, when you see them invest in something uh, and then get rewarded for it, that, that's a good feeling, right? So, uh, and we've been a good offense this year. You know, I just thought we got a little bit, a little bit slow there at the end. I think we've given Kentucky all the credit we possibly can. We thought they pitched some really good ball games, uh, some good starts, some guys coming out of the bullpen. They had, they did have the SEC top reliever that pitched uh, well against us. Um, but just the battle adversity. Uh, this team's been consistent. You know, we were facing something tonight. We, the model of consistency with our program is we, we haven't lost more than two games consecutively this year. And we were staring that in the face in the first game of the regional tonight. So uh, the first inning kind of did a good job of taking care of that. Uh, but the guys have been consistent for us. Whenever we've met challenges, um, I, I can't remember a time I've coached in 20 years in the SEC being a part of a team that hadn't went on some kind of run to, to, to lose more than two ball games at, at, at any point in time of the year. So the consistency has been great. It's just, uh, it, it's been a good reset and 
everything seemed to be in the range. Our, our pitching, the defense um, seemed to be in the range, but that seemed to be the glaring challenge for us is to kind of reset our offense uh, and, and get back to doing some things that we uh, have done tonight. And it's, again, I just say it's one game, um, but the guys did a nice job of it tonight. Coach, Florida State always seems to be around when offense in the postseason or offense five. Yeah. I'm sure you watched them today. What, what, what were your thoughts? Yeah, just, uh, you know, I, I thought it was awesome. You know, part of the nostalgia for me of, of having this regional here is having two teams like that when I walk out of, of my office and walk up the stands and I got a UCLA team that um, competed against and lost the national championship in 13. And then the first regional that we had here at Auburn was at Florida State in 17. And we took them right down to the last uh, pitch, I guess, and, and a chance to win that regional. And I just, I remember uh, how gracious and how nice Mike Martin was to me senior, uh, how he was a absolute rock star. Uh, so you, you got a, a championship caliber team, um, and then you got a, a team that's made 44 consecutive regionals. Um, I, I think whichever team that I know we play Florida State tomorrow, but if we have to play Southeast and Louisiana again, I know they're never going to quit. Um, and I know that um, I know that UCLA is a, a proven performer. Those are brands that are in this tournament. This is a tough tournament. This thing is like one step. Of, of many steps that's going to happen here. But uh, I, I take it as excitement. I try to get these guys to be excited that they're playing traditional brands in a regional and we're the ones hosting it. And that's uh, that's called a great opportunity to me, to me, even though we respect our opponents uh, whole, wholeheartedly. We'll take four more questions. Coach, did you mention yesterday kind of how the team hasn't faced a lot of lefty starters this year? And obviously, Adam Good today. Um, do you have a guy in Hubbard tomorrow, kind of that same mold of a, of a unique delivery lefty? What are your initial thoughts on how to get the team turned around and ready to face a challenge like that? Yeah, my knee's hurting. I've been through multiple groups of batting practice the last few days. So um, we, we just prepared and got ready. And, you know, soon as soon, what I liked about us offensively tonight is you can prepare for a few days when you know you're going to face the starter. You get his name, you get his stuff. Good Lord, these guys got virtual reality glasses now that they can put on and start seeing the arsenal, seeing the pitches. We can plug it into a machine down there where it's not the person, but we can actually see the speed of his ball, the spin of the ball, the shape of his breaking ball, all the analytics of his changeup, and you get to face that arsenal. I think I was most impressed tonight when they took the lefty out and they brought a right-hander in, number 21. You immediately was sitting there at 86, 87. Now it's like a cut fastball. And we, I, I think that's when Sonny Mail went opposite field home run right there. I just knew we were locked in uh, from Jump Street like everybody does. But when somebody we prepared for for a few days and then they switched to a right-hander and now the ball is going the other way in a cut and we continue to maintain the level of at-bats, that's when I knew our guys were really locked in because we prepared hard for this lefty. But uh, I think I was even more impressed when they brought the righty in. So. We'll do the same thing, but just like in this game, a lot of times if you're having success at something, they're going to go to the pin and bring something exactly opposite out. And uh, the guys really bridged that well mm -hmm. with the first two guys, so seeing a completely different look. Chris, you had eight or nine starters with uh, good hits tonight, and you had six guys in multi-hit games. Well, how does that make you feel, though, if you're not just relying on one guy for offense? Yeah, you know you 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 know sometimes guys carry you and guys aren't doing as much. But yeah, this is definitely nice to see everybody. So I'm I'm absolutely ecstatic about everybody. I, Bello, uh, he got the one little chink there through the six hole where he kind of did the half swing. Y'all are all laughing at him, right? You know, <laughs> but he he he, he barreled balls all night and he hadn't been in there in a while. I thought that was outstanding. His last at bat may have been his best at bat to right field. Um, Cam Hill come off the bench. He had a four pitch walk, his first at bat, the second at bat. I think he might have had the last RBI of the ball game there and hit the ball hard. Um, everybody contributed. Uh, uh, Bryson Ware got in the ball game there for the defense there late in the ball game. Swung at a first pitch, put the ball in play, uh, just top to bottom. Nate LaRue, some good bounce back for Nate. Um, and he's been coming the last few days. And 
and doing some things. I could just go top to bottom. I'm, I'm leaving guys out, but uh, yeah, the more the merrier. But uh, you know, tomorrow will be a completely different set of circumstances. You don't know what game you're going to get, and we'll, we'll take that every game the rest of the year. But we know that it's a completely different set of circumstances how things set up tomorrow. So as long as everybody's just engaged and, and focusing pitch by pitch and trying to have it bats and not worry about the base runners and just take care of their bats, uh, we'll, we'll roll with that. Adam? Coach, um, not having a dip into really, I guess, some of the, the usual suspects out of the bullpen tonight, whether that's Brooke Harper also, et cetera. Just yeah, how big is that setting up the rest of the weekend? Yeah, I think it's huge. Again, I told you in the second inning, I, I got tapped on the shoulder. I started tapping on the shoulder. We had a little conversation about Trace. We actually used Trace Friday in Kentucky game two because it was a Thursday, Friday, Saturday series. And we brought him back on four days in the middle of the game when we started Skipper and used him for three innings. So I just wasn't really interested in that again. And I like a lot of our guys, but uh, you, you take a, examples, a, a Sheehan and a Isbell that are coming on and starting to throw the ball real well. They're still just 13 months off of a surgical procedure. And you start thinking about multiple outings. Um, we, we've been trying to get Berkey back to that form, you know, ever since the Tennessee series with his hamstring. And we feel like the arm's turning around and that one outing's really good. And, but before we start using them multiple times, man, if I can save one is what we elected to do. And that's for that's for all of them. That's for Skipper, that's for also that's for Swilling. That's, uh, you know, that's kind of how we're built. And, uh, and of course, everybody knows that Joe's is throwing tomorrow. He's, he's welcome to throw eight or nine innings if he would like. But, <laughs> but we know that we got to have a – we opted for the rested bullpen because we know there's big challenges ahead as soon as we get back out on that field tomorrow. And uh, so Trace Trace did good work for us. And I just – I guess I wasn't interested there when I made that decision is because if I asked him to come back, even if he threw two or three innings, we're not talking about a four-day turnaround. We're talking about a – Saturday, Sunday, we're talking about a two-day turnaround for an if game. That's how they start talking about the Monday game is an if game. So we, we, I think we did the right thing there, but it was absolutely contemplated, I guess, is the best way. Coach, you trace, trace uh, when you have a long wait like that between innings, is, is, is that create some difficulty for you? You got to stay focused and, you know, it takes some time to, to learn, you know, maybe in my younger freshman year, sophomore year, I'm maybe not mature enough to do that, but you know, you, you can take all the runs you can get as a pitcher, especially as a starting pitcher that early in the game. It, you know, it's comforting to know that they've got your back um, throughout the whole game, but it can be difficult sitting over there for so long while Cole's hitting home runs right and left, but um, it's, it's nice at the same time. Did you go throw or do anything? Yeah. <laughs> One last question from Justin Hokinson. I feel like I'm going to tell my team tomorrow that we won seven regional games in a row. <laughs> and uh, this will come down to execution and, and absolutely. I think this is the 12th regional, right, or whatever yeah. set up with Florida State. So I get all that. It just won't be the determining factor of a ball game. And I, I do know we've won seven regional games in a row. And I'm always trying to build confidence. The game's hard enough as it is when you look at trying to catch a ball and throw a ball and, and play a ball at a high level of anything. It's tough. So I'll, I'll be building them up and, and, and letting them know that we've had success and, and, and we're here. And uh, we're going we're gonna to play either a great opponent, a hot opponent, <laughs> or whatever you want to call it every game of the year. And uh, But you're right. I mean, you, you know how many texts and emails I've gotten about trying to be competitive and, and do good against Florida State or else. You know, I got a lot of those this week or we're coming for you. <laughs> but uh, we're going to do everything we can. and. We realize the uniform that we got on. We know the history of our program. But at the same time, this is going to come down to how we uh, get, get started in this ball game. If we can keep having good at-bats, if we can dominate the routine play, 
if we can chip in some timely hits tomorrow, that'll that'll be the biggest factor. Um, not revenge, um, anything like that. It'll it'll be more executionally. Thank you, Coach. Appreciate it. Yeah.